With 2014 approaching at concerning speed and as the crushing reality of realising you failed this year's outlandishly unachievable resolutions begins to set in, it's time to celebrate one of PlayStation's greatest ever years. But there's no celebrating to be had unless someone wins. So with the promise of chocolate-based bribery and a pa 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 poker face pa pa poker face that none of our staff could ever have read, we locked them all in a cupboard until they could select those prestigious few titles that we feel best represents gaming across Sony's consoles for 2013. Could I get any lower? No, is the answer. Let us begin with our favourite PlayStation 3 games of this year. Despite November heralding the beginning of the end for PS3's colourful history, we were still treated to a wealth of stunning games. From impactful and charming indie titles like Rain and Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, to sprawling JRPGs such as Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch, and Dwayvid Quedge's emotional roller coaster Beyond Toast Halls. The list of top notch releases numbered too highly to honour each game individually. So without further ado, here's our top three. Number three GTA 5. Michael, Trevor and Franklin's story was mired in controversy when GTA V launched in September of this year, forcing concerned parents and ignorant politicians to condemn the game's excessively violent themes. But to us, it just meant that Rockstar had managed to do it again. Returning to San Andreas, we were treated to a series first, three protagonists. Michael is a retired bank robber who faked his own death to get out of the game. He now lives unhappily with a family that hates him and spends his time reveling in poolside misery on a daily basis. Franklin is a baller a gangster and a straight-up G. Yo. Stuck in Da Hood, he dreams of hitting one big score that would see him leave the life of petty crime and allow him to escape from the, what he lovingly refers to as, idiots that he currently associates with. Finally, there's Trevor. A highly divisive character, T is a completely unpredictable murderer, hit and runner, drug taker, and torturer. In past titles, this character may have been an eccentric individual that might have given you missions, but GTA V unapologetically plunks you in the psychopath's shoes. Hooray! Together, they form a completely unstable bank robbing trio, running into problems with the feds, the police, the CIA, and more across their 30 hour campaign of destruction. But GTA tends not to stick in the mind because of what happens in the narrative. No, no, no. Every person who's ever played these games in the history of time and space will be able to recount several funny occurrences that were entirely of their own making, and the newest entry in the series acknowledges this by giving you a map the size of the galaxy, including mountains and ocean, aircraft and all-terrain vehicles, and of course, a plethora of devastating weaponry. As we said in our review, Rockstar's latest tale of crime and punishment is easily one of the best open-world games on the market, and it represents the pinnacle of the publisher's massively popular property too. Alliteration. San Andreas is truly your playground, and with a multiplayer mode that now totally works, allowing you to trash up the place with your friends, GTA V is truly deserving of its number three spot. Just don't tell Trevor he didn't come first. Number two, Bioshock Infinite. The latest in Irrational Games, it might be trying to say something very clever about society but we can't really tell because the point they're making is a little too ham-fisted series, Bioshock Infinite swapped the murky depths of Rapture for the beautiful open skies of Columbia. You play as Booker, a private detective with a mysterious and shady past, dispatched to the floating city of Columbia with one simple instruction, bring us the girl wipe away the debt. As you first arrive and bumble around the sun-soaked streets and chat with the noticeably white-only population, you come across what can only be described as a despicable and disturbing example of how society has developed here, with an interracial couple on the receiving end of horrific abuse. Ruled over by a deified man named Comstock, to whom the whole idea of a floating city can be attributed, you must save Elizabeth from her prison whilst overcoming the bizarre array of mechanical beasties that stand in your path and somehow escape the lofty heights of the flying metropolis with your lives. Plasmids have made the jump from the previous series entries and are now called Vigors, as in, look at me vigorously electrocute this man, look at this vigorous display of fireball to the face, and recoil at this flurry of vigorously pecking birds. And when combined with a specific weapon, true devastation can be unleashed upon your foes. Skylines, dimension jumping, alternate realities, the idea and gameplay features Infinite introduces are novel, mind-expanding ones that'll surely leave you googling theories concerning the finale immediately as the credits begin to roll. As we so eloquently put it in our review, Irrational Games has once again proven that it's a very special developer. And if there's any silver lining to the adventure's complex conclusion, it's that the studio is certain to take us somewhere equally endearing when it returns in a few years' time. Here's hoping. Number one! The Last of Us. 
But of course, sneaking its way into the number one spot is the incredible The Last of Us. If the outstanding Uncharted series hadn't already cemented developer Naughty Dog's legacy, then this will surely do it. Commanding the role of Joel, a survivor of a mega-spore virusy thing that wipes out society as we know it, you're reluctantly swept up in an adventure that sees you accompanying a young girl by the name of Ellie to a medical facility on the other side of the country in the hope of distilling a cure from her immunity. Unfortunately, the journey isn't an easy one. What remains of mankind is, for the most part, greedy and violent. The chances of coming across a friend are very slim indeed. And then there are the infected. Grotesque, inhuman creatures, they stagger around, emitting a highly disturbing clicking noise. And should you have the misfortune of bumping into a whole gang of them, you'd best be prepared to run. But this isn't only because of how deadly they are. Your lack of an effective offense also comes into play. Sure, when taking on humans, engaging in a fist fight may not be a recommended strategy, but you'll probably be able to walk away. Take on clickers in this manner, and you'll be their dinner. This ever-present threat forces you to think on your toes, and by picking up items around the game world, you can craft a myriad of dangerous objects, from nail bats to Molotov cocktails. The gameplay is so well designed, but simply hearing the sound of a clicker will send chills down your spine. However, what must be lauded above all else is the genre-defining quality of the writing and the acting on show. Indeed, the authors and performers will manipulate you to to the extent that you'll genuinely fear for your life, more than likely tear up, and be filled with an incandescent thirst for redemption across the game's 15-hour runtime. Now you may have noticed there are no daft asides here, no jokes, and that's because it's incredible, simply brilliant. If you have any self-respect as a gamer or appreciate the advancement of the industry in general, get it played. As we put it, an assured, touching, and engrossing adventure, The Last of Us represents a watershed moment for the medium. The unlikely bond that blossoms between the title's two leads is both heart-rending and poignantly paced, but the release delivers much more than captivating cinematics. And there we have it, our top three PlayStation 3 games of 2013. Check back throughout the next week to discover our Vita, PS4 and overall game of the year, and as always, thanks for watching.